Episode 11, and we're coming to you from one of our short-term rental homes, and so that's why the scenery looks a little bit different. Comfy. Yeah, we're testing out on-the-road equipment stuff, so. It, it looks like I'm slouching. I'm, I'm not. I'm trying to sit straight up. I'm sitting a little closer <laughs> to the camera than Charlie is, but. Well, welcome. Yeah, mm -hmm. thanks for joining us. <clears throat> we are excited to talk about our latest uh, challenge uh, that. Really, I guess it's it's it, it's something that every business has if they keep growing with in a certain range that they're going to be faced with, and that is how to keep nepotism from happening in your organization. Which we don't call it nepotism; we call it well. Our policy is called impartiality because, of course, nepotism really is favoring people that you're in relationship with, whether it's relatives or uh, close relationships with friends. And so uh, it was my desire to make sure that we were calling it what it is, which was we want to be impartial to everyone that comes to work for us and that they earn what they get uh, and that it's fair and equitable. So, Well, you know, <clears throat> as a small company, we started off at as going into a larger, medium-sized company. Um, we realize that we have a lot of great employees and they have family members and they want to come work where their loved ones work too. And, and it's a good in family environment still uh, with a small to medium sized company getting larger. And uh, we want to welcome those people. But on the other hand, when you have so many people working for you that are related into it, we want to make sure that we're keeping everybody um, honest is not the word, but keep everybody um, in their integrity. Yeah, and we want to make it fair, and we want to make it fair for other people that work for us that maybe don't have a relative or somebody else that's working there, and we want to make sure that everybody has the same um, same equal treatment, and they are treated fairly, and uh, they are uh, brought up within our company, too, because one of our biggest goals is to raise people up and, and get them to uh, get to their next level. So we're trying to... Uh, trying to navigate through those waters right now. And it's it's been uh, lots of draft versions. <laughs> yeah, well, I, bringing our impartiality policy to fruition really meant that there was some changes that we had to make within the organization in order to come into compliance with that policy. And one of those practical spaces is we have team members that love working at BAC and they tell all their friends and they tell their family. And then, of course, we're looking for qualified, uh, great people. And if the people that we already have are great, the people that they hang out with are probably going to be great, too. We're hoping it goes down the gene pool. <laughs> yeah. So it's like it's this thing of referrals in our in our industry really are a, a, a large part of how we receive new employees and new members to the team. So it was um, it was certainly there was a lot of mindful things to consider. You know, when you're dealing with so many people, you know, I think we're 225 employees right now. <clears throat> that's a uh, that's a tough number sometimes. And when you're saying that, it's knowing everybody and be able to meet them and greet them and talk to them and, and understand who they are and what's going on in their family dynamics and some of their other family members work with us. And, and then the same with our friends. I mean, I don't know how many people worked for us throughout the years that were looking for a part-time gig as they came off the slope or they were looking for a second gig because they're putting their kid through college. So we have those uh, personal relationships with those people too and we want to make sure that they don't get uh preferential um treatment more than somebody that we might not know so we appreciate everybody but we want to make sure that it's uh it's an even playing field across across the field yeah and you know another piece of that that i don't hear a lot of is how do we support the team members that currently are in supervisor positions and their, their relatives work in other departments. And there is a difference of, of hierarchy. So like for instance, there could be a supervisor that supervises airport staff, but their aunt and uncle work on the driving team. And we consider operations, the management of operations, one, one leadership group. However, that person who works at the airport doesn't directly manage the driver team. But there could be some expectations that come along like, hey, you're one of the supervisors, you can help me out. And 
it really puts those individuals that are supervising in a tough spot if there isn't solid policy to just say, hey, sorry, auntie, but the company has an impartiality policy and I can't do that, but you could go talk to this other individual and maybe that's something that they would allow. And one of the things that we run into is that <clears throat> All of our managers manage all the departments too. They all have specific departments that they manage. But uh, if you're the manager on duty or you're doing something, you might have a family member or a friend that's working in that department too. And you might have to be that first person who gets to see them. So we want to make sure that we're setting them up for success and making sure that they're taking care of the members at when it's going on right then and there. But if it's something that has to be disciplinary or something that has to be with rewarding, that should go to another manager or go to another supervisor and let them do it so it doesn't look like there is is uh, preference to somebody, uh, we want to make sure it's, imp uh, what's the what I'm impartial. looking for? Impartial. So we, uh, you know, and again, you know, working with our company has grown so much <clears throat> as we become into these situations and issues, we kind of see that we have to have policies put in place because things happen and we want to make sure that uh, we put a policy and a procedure in place for it. So that the expectations are clear. Yes. Because the team, it's not like the team doesn't want to do what the right thing to do is. It's that they don't always know because they don't have the experience that uh, maybe an owner or a senior leader would have. And so they don't, it's not that they don't have common sense. It's that they've just never been in that situation to figure it out. And feeling uh, alone and having having to navigate waters like that on their own, especially some of the different cultures that we have working for us, it is expected that if there's an elder that works um, with you, even um, it, whether it's at home, a volunteer job or at work, like the younger person wants to show respect to them. And so it's really about also supporting those individuals in their position. You know, we have family members that work for us, too, in ours, mm -hmm. and we try to make sure that we're impartial to that also and let their managers deal with things and how it's going on there, too. And even our kids, our kids work for us, too. And, you know, that's a little tough because we demand so much from them and then uh, they want to make sure that they're pleasing us. And all the employees want to make sure that they're working with us and pleasing us and making sure that they're doing their job correctly. And, and like, again, it's uh, it's fair. It's fair across the board. You know, I think that um, we have three children ourselves, and our oldest is 30, and he worked for us probably from, like, at, within the transportation company he worked, I think, from maybe 12. Is it 12 or 13? Well, I mean, it goes all the way back to our snowplowing companies and things like that that he used to shovel he, and do things like that. So he's been with us. Younger. Yeah, so he's done that. He's been working with us since he's 11 or 12 years old, uh, helping here and there, and then, you know, kind of more moved into the company. And then he worked himself up to a supervisor. I mean, that was one of the things he worked in the dispatch and supervisors and CSAs. And, um, you know, he's moved on since there. But now we have a son that's working in our detail department, and he's a DGM. A DGM. And then we also have our daughter that works up in the accounting department in HR. So, I mean, it's, uh, you know, we we support wanting to hire friends and family. Um, we just want to make sure there's policies and procedures around it so everybody's clear in expectations. And that they have something to support them when they're making decisions. And part of the impartiality policy is, is a re relationship declaration form. And that's just a form that if that you're declaring, hey, I'm, I have a relationship with this person, and you're also uh, bringing forward any conflicts of interest that may be uh, present. And, and how to remedy those, like a suggestion to remedy those, is also part of the document. And that's really uh, something that you have to have to follow that impartiality policy. Otherwise, you're not really going to know clearly who's what. And you don't want to assume things. You don't want to assume that somebody's doing dating someone else or you just make that part of your policy that they need to declare it if it's a thing. You know, and it's it, we didn't wake up one day and just automatically know what to do on this. There's a lot of research done. There's a lot of looking up things, talking to other companies and talking to other people to try to come up with a great best practices, I would say. Yeah, you know, and I think another shift to that is you have the policy in place and that supports your team members, but now, like, what if it's a family member? What if it is, um, in our case, like, what if it's a really close friend? 
And I've had situations where I've had close friends come work for us as contractors. And when that is a thing, I have a, a, a vendor and contractor agreement. And normally it's like, hey, we're going to agree no matter what that this contract is going to last through this date. And then we'll reevaluate it and see, hey, we still want to continue on with this agreement or we don't. And either way, the relationship is going to be more important than this particular job that we're getting done. And that I have always found success in that situation. And normally, uh, you want to be really considerate of when your busy season is because you don't want to end a contract right in the middle of a busy season. So I always made my contracts through the end of September for us because that October month was a shoulder month for us before we, we headed into cargo season. So those are some other really important pieces to consider when you are hiring somebody or you're considering using a friend, a close friend or family, and you're concerned about damaging the relationship. And I think everybody in our industry has done that. I mean, everybody's okay. been in that same same boat. And uh, I don't know how many cousins or aunts or uncles or uh, yeah. your 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 mother, your father, your wife, your whatever else it is, you know, you we get the job done and the job is to get done. And, you know, these guys might work for us a couple times a year. They might work for us five days a week, but we want to make sure that they're, they know where their place is at work too and who their direct boss and who their immediate supervisors are. And they should always go through them instead of just coming to the hierarchies. <laughs> Yeah, and I think that's really important, especially for the people that have been related to us that have come to work for the company. Uh, we, we have um, always, you need to go to your direct supervisor and then involve us if, if, uh, if it needs to get escalated. But the other piece too is that we don't really talk about work when we're at a family barbecue. Like that's not something that usually comes up. So I think that that is something that we really have been like, it's, it's kind of been an unspoken thing, but. Yeah, I mean, sometimes, I mean, not unrealistically, there might be some stuff that comes up because they, they just want to talk about something to get off their chest. But again, that we try to re-divert them to their supervisors and managers. And they always know our doors open, but we're the last resort, not the first resort, unless it's something so far that they need to come to us about it. But, you know, I don't know how many people I've re-diverted back to their managers and just said, hey, have you really talked to them? Or have you talked to this person? And have you gotten the results you're looking for? And if you're unhappy, what's, what are you unhappy about? Well, what's, what's the problem? And, <clears throat> you know, like I said, every organization has their, uh, their internal issues, and uh, they also have all the good nuances that what the company brings to them. I mean, company barbecues, and they have a lot of fun. You know, we really try to uh, step up the uh, the fun level at our work also. You know, barbecues, and we get together for Christmas. We do Christmas parties. We, we, we do Easter parties. We, we really try to bring that fun element to it. And if you see some of our videos on some of our employees, they'll give testimonies in it. And we don't try to give them props or anything to talk about it. We just ask them to be honest and talk about what's going on in their life and how they like working for us. And, you know, that's the best testimony you can do as an employer, have your employees talk for you. Um, <clears throat> the same thing as we do references for friends when they want to uh, get a transmission taken care of, they need a roofer, they need a painter. A reference from us, a referral is way better. And if we can get a referral from a great employee, that's really good from us because we know those guys are great. And we've had some family members that have come to us and said, hey, my family has, has applied and they're not going to be a good fit and I'm not vouching for yeah, them. I'm and, not vouching. And 100%. And that lets us know, too, because they're concerned about what their status in with our company is. Because if it's their cousin or sister or brother and they come there and they cause havoc, they don't want to have that bad mark against them. And we would never take that against them but it's kind and nice that they come to us and talk to us about it because they don't want to see what's happened maybe in the past with them or something else happening to them we want to make sure we keep that culture intact you know that's a great point is going to the team member that um, is related to the applicant and just asking them hey uh, would you recommend them yeah <laughs> Absolutely. Would and you if, hire them? If their answer is, I'm not vouching for them. <laughs> or they give you a funny look at first and they're like, ooh, yeah, you know? Right. And then you're like, oh, okay, well, tell me what that looks like, you know? What is the ooh? Well, the ooh might be because they have childcare issues or they might have uh, a, a transportation issue. Some of those things we can, we can get past. Some of those people that are just working for us part-time as... Uh, DGMs or CSAs or work over at airport ambassadors, or they might be drivers. We can use a driver one or two days a week on the weekends because that's great for us. But, you know, we just, 
we have to find out what that ooh is, or hey, I'm I'm not uh, I'm not comfortable with this. And you know, wh wh what's that mean to you? Because what it means to them might mean not mean the same thing to us. Well, and something else that you brought up is making sure that uh, when team members are referring their family, that you're absolutely like holding everybody at their own merit. There was a situation that occurred a couple of years ago with an employee uh, who had a son that came to work for us and it didn't work out. And it was just not a good fit. And we are big on our raise up values and accountability is, some, is one of the ways that we show our love as a team. And it's, it's purely so that we can get traction in the areas that we need to and uh, we need to make sure that we're getting the stuff that we need to do in our, in our daily duties done. And the, the father was really concerned that that was gonna be something that was held against him because his son couldn't, his adult son couldn't pull it together. And just reassuring team members that, hey, this has nothing to do with you. There's no bad marks on them yeah, there, whatsoever. There's none. And, you know, sometimes we'll go to them afterwards and just say, hey, we're so sorry it didn't work out, uh, but we still value very much of you as an employee for us. And, you know, we, we, we tried everything we could to make sure that this fit, but it just doesn't fit. And, you know, why wait a year or six months or whatever else it is if it doesn't fit? You know, you have to make that decision right away because time, investment, money, that's all important things for our things. Um, and, you know, I mean, sometimes you don't want a, a, a person to bring down your team a little bit, too. You want to raise those team members up. You know, and something else to consider is uh, what are my practices when it doesn't work out? Because when you're, when you're working to keep nepotism out of your workplace you really need to make sure that you're documenting what's going on yeah. so that it, it, you can prove without a doubt, and I, I've said this many times to the team uh, in, in all kinds of um, applications. One of them was if you could prove uh, in a court of law that um, you were fair to your team members, like what would that look like? And it's really, it's about documentation making sure you're documenting incidences, making sure you're doc documenting coachings. We call ours accountability uh, forms. They're not write-ups. There's this, like, I think negative context around, like, oh, that's a written, that's a verbal. Ours are accountability uh, forms. And it could be a coaching. It could, it, and then if it could go to a verbal and then a written. And there is an escalation process. But the point of it is, is that, we have around the clock, so we have three shifts that we're usually managing, and there's different supervisors on every single shift. I call it seven shifts because uh, we, we don't really have a nine to five or anything That's like that. True. We are, so we have some staggered. people is staggered within the company. But as Steve is saying, it's it's uh, there's a lot of dynamics what we have, what we're doing, and it's uh, it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort to get those people trained up and doing what we want them to do. And that's why documenting, if you're having to talk to somebody about something, it's just a super quick form that we use. Jotform.com is the, uh, the, the easy form system that we use. Sure, host and, that. And I'll tell you, it's really helpful to know that Joe coached Jimmy on uh, uniforms yesterday and then Susan can look up and see if Jimmy had any coachings about uniforms before she coaches him and then she's going to know that this is escalating from a um, coaching to a verbal warning like hey and it's it just provides this transparency of communication when we're when we're coaching somebody through and Charlie and I want to know that the supervisors and the managers actually did what they were supposed to do, like when they tell us that they, they've talked to this person four different times, we just want to know when. You know, and we're not perfect either. I mean, sometimes life gets in front of us and we forget to get the coaching in right away and everything like that, but we have to go back to it and make sure that we get it in. If it's a weekend and you get the call, make sure that whoever's involved into it puts in the coachings in it and it prompts us also to put the coachings in too, whoever dealt with it. Um, you know, we want to be fair and impartial again, just like we are doing for nepotism and friends, but also we want to make sure that we're building them up. And, you know, sometimes they just don't, I don't want to use the word 
don't think. I think sometimes they, they overlook things. Know. Yeah, they don't know. and we want to make sure that they get the gr the correct way of how we want things to do and what the correct way is to do it. And sometimes they look at it might be just easy as them look at the policies and procedures of how to do it, and then they get it, and then we don't have that problem anymore. But you know, really getting if you're putting the time and investment into your company into your employees, you want to make sure you get the best outcome out of it. And nobody should be uh, dismissed from a job and not know why. Yeah. Like there really needs to be this setup for success where this is where I coached you here. This is where we had a, a verbal warning about this situation here. I coached you over here. And to be honest with you, I know Orion's probably not going to love this, but our oldest, when he turned 18, he just could not get behind some of the processes that we needed him to get behind. And I used the same uh, escalation method with him that I would with any other team member back then. And granted, that was a dozen years ago. But he asked me, he was like, Mom, you never told me any of this. And I was like, here's, here's the document where I coached you on that. Here's where I wrote you up for this. Here's where you were suspended for two days because you did X, Y, and Z. And uh, it wasn't things that were harsh. It was, hey, uh, he happened to be very much into IT at the time, and he would make changes to my systems without permission. And I said, that can never be a thing. Like, yeah, he wanted to better them because he thought they were better. Yes. But, but he doesn't realize that it's a chain effect. When he makes a change in what happens in there, we need to let the other supervisors and managers and everybody else know yes. that there's a change there. And all of a sudden, they're like, hey, this is not what was written before. And it's not because he tried to be malice or it, do anything wrong. He was just thinking that he was bettering it. Um, but there's a process to do that. Yes. And uh, again, um, we want to set up our team for best success and best success is having a, a policy and a procedure, how to do each one of those things. We're not perfect by any means. We learned this in 24 years of us with trials and errors and yeah. figuring out how, what's going on. Lots and, of unintended outcomes. Yeah. And you know, it, it's so easy for us to say this person's done it a hundred times, but it might've been only once or twice, but we in our mind heard about it maybe 10 or 12 times because somebody told us about this and then it just escalates onto it. And then when we go to, uh, to promote somebody or do something else, we're like, well, I can't believe we're promoting this person because we've had this many tardies. And we're like, wow, we looked in the incident files, we found nothing. Well, I know they've done it personally and I have. Well, there's nothing written in here. So how do we hold somebody accountable if we don't hold our own team accountable to making sure that we're getting those uh, write-ups taken up or their coachings or whatever else it might be? So we really have to narrow that down, especially when somebody's asking for a supervisor position or a manager position or a raise, you know, because we always feel like, you know, we want to raise up our employees obviously too. So when it comes to financial, we need to know about these things. We need to know, and it's just not the negative things. Positive things can be put in there too. It could be saying this person went right outside the, outside his bounds and he helped him. I, I can't even tell you how many times we've gotten this phone call from one of our airlines saying, Hey, uh, our airline flight attendant, I'll take that one. She got her purse stolen and she didn't have money for food or anything like that. And one of our drivers gave her for like 30 or 40 bucks and went and got her food. And we got this great letter from the airline saying, and your driver went way above and beyond and they returned the money and took care of it. But our driver selfishly just took care of the person because he felt for them because he was there. So sometimes it's the accountability might be something that's a positive thing that's coming up that they want us to be aware of it too. And, and, and that's something great to put in their packet or their document also is saying, Hey, this person went above and beyond. And that's what we really look for. Let's, let's put in the positive things too. You know, we have at our company, uh, something called a praise report. And it is other team members, anybody in the organization has access to that form. And it's basically catching somebody doing something awesome or doing something that they really appreciate. And sometimes it's just doing your job with a little bit higher energy and, and you know, uh, really like lifting up the team in that way. And that's something that over time, We've had challenges where leadership has challenged people to turn in five praise reports for the week. It just kind of ebb and flows over the years. And gosh, we probably had that form at least 10 or 15 years. Yeah. And it just goes up and down. And it's, it's just another aspect of um, encouraging that positive culture and not just waiting to catch them doing something that they're not supposed to be doing. So that's another little uh, nugget, as you would say. Get your that, nuggets. Um, that, that is just <clears throat> that, that extra piece. 
And we have drivers that are husband and wife teams. I mean, Junior and his wife. I mean, yeah. they do an excellent job. And, Both and, CDL drivers now. Yeah. Yes, it's she got her Fina. CDL. Yeah, Fina, Fina is great. And, you know, you talk about a family that is just, they've had multiple members of their family. And one of them was a supervisor for us. He turned into a CSA. We've had DGMs out of their family. I mean, we've, we've really prospered off their family of having maybe five or six of their family members work for us at one time, not including cousins or whatever else has come in involved in that. And, and, and with our HR director and everybody else, yeah, I mean, it's they've brought in. I wouldn't say so much of our prosper as it is just a delight to see people, especially parents trust us with having their children come to work for us. And we're able to, even if it's just a college student who's hanging out for the summer, they're coming in and they're, they're doing a good job and they're, they're in an environment that is happy and fun. And, and there's variety and excitement at times and bursts of busyness. And it's, it's, there's nothing like being in lo transportation and logistics, I'll tell you. We're a logistics company that does transportation. Yes, <laughs> um, we are. We happen to get people from point A to point B. Point B. But, but there's a lot of logistics behind the back door of it. <laughs> and, you know, to kind of bring this home, it's like the core of your focus in logistics doesn't just stop with your customers. It really is the team. The team, nothing happens without the team having communication, having clear expectations, having accountability, and supporting them in the integrity in, inside themselves. Like raise up is this, this whole idea of being true to yourself and doing hard things and stepping into courage. And there's, there is just, people blooming all over the company as a result of the embodiment of, of the Raise Up core values. Well, it's a lot. It is a lot. And you know, before we go, what advice could you give somebody who is working with their teenage children? Oh. Because, you know, we have a 16-year-old. We struggle year sometimes old. with that too who is in HR and we have a 15 year old who just is, turned 15. Yep. He's working. So we have DGMs, detail, grounds, uh, grounds and maintenance yeah. is what we call those guys. And so they do a Maybe little this would bit be like clean detailing, the clean the building, mopping, doing stuff like that. Yeah. So, um, you know, both come with struggles. Um, you know, when they are tired and they don't want to go to work, they come to us and they want us to Can go ahead and not go to work yeah. Today? And then, you know, then they have this, uh, sometimes, um, entitlement because they're the owner's kids. And I, I feel like I'm almost harder on it because I worked for my dad when I was growing up. I worked for family members and my uncle and everything like that. And they expect a lot more. And we do too, because they're, they carry our last name. So again, as we have this nepotism or we have it called anti -nepotism. the anti-nepotism, you know, it's tough for us when we see, um, when they're not bringing their best. And I, I probably take it a little bit more personally because we take a lot of pride in our company because we started it in 2000, you know, now we're 2024, we're in our 25th year now. And so we're really looking at this saying, wow, we want to build the legacy for them, uh, even if they don't want it, but we want to build a legacy on, we want them to become hard workers because Athena and I herself have really, you know, busted our butt in this company and, and really kind of, uh, took it to the next level, I want to say. And, and we want them to have the same goals in their life. If it's not in the transportation, it's not in logistics, it's whatever they want to be, we want them to be the best at what they are. So when you're dealing with your kids working for you, and I'm sure there's a lot of people that are watching this podcast that are going to have the same things. Uh, Teenagers in particular. Yeah. That's an extra layer. And there's a lot of things going on with them and their bodies and what's going on with their life their and what brain. they think. Yeah. And what they think is right and wrong. And, you know, when you're 15 and 16, you know, we know everything, you know, and it's we're trying to instill to them that there's a lot of stuff they can learn. And we're just trying to teach it to them. So, um, again, another another layer of that. And and maybe sometimes I'm not the best person to talk to about that uh, because I I. I take a lot of pride in what they want to do. So sometimes I'll have one of our supervisors or managers pull them aside and talk to them. And, and then sometimes they receive it differently than we would, uh, or they would from us, I would say. So Yeah, I would say that that connection of um, not being able to hear your parents definitely can translate to work. And I would agree with you that probably one of the best scenarios is to 
let their supervisor handle whatever the challenge is and, and take them through the process of doing a coaching, doing a verbal. Like the bigger picture here is that they're not untouchable. We expect them to be part of the culture that's bringing this uplifted uh, place, this, this perspective. And it can be a challenge at times, but don't lose your cool, basically. And communicating with them, even though they're teenagers, it's sitting them down and giving them the opportunity to go, hey, you can't act like I'm your father at work. You need to be, I mean, that was one of the rules that I had with, with our oldest when he worked for us, just call me Athena. There's a lot of people that are around us that don't know I'm your mom and I don't want there to be any stigmatism around that. And so when we're at work, just call me Athena. The younger ones, they kind of go back and forth. They, they're, they're different children. But the bigger picture here is use the leverage of your leadership team to help you navigate that. And then let, let the kids know, hey, I love you. However, here the expectation is X. And if you want to enjoy having spending money and your paycheck and uh, being connected to the company, because in the in the event that, that something happens to us, somebody's it, getting it. <laughs> they they need to know, have an awareness of what's going on within the organization. Even if it's knowing how to wash cars, like even the oldest one, he has his foot in the door of like doing some contract work for us just to keep some awareness and people know who he is. So it's it's uh, it can be challenging. And then at the end of the day, they don't have to work there. Like that's been made very clear that if it's not working for the company and it's not working for our relationship, then don't feel like you are obligated to keep holding on. Like that part of perseverance in our raise up core value is not let's deal with bad situations and just hope they get better. It's stepping into courage to say, this is not allowed here because it's not good for anybody. And, and embracing the reality of that, not pretending like it's not happening. That's, that's really important about that courage, courage piece. Yeah. Thank you guys again for watching our show and watching this podcast. We just, uh, we want to share what we have uh, and the nuggets that we can give you. So uh, this is all just part of uh what we learn and how we, we communicate with you guys and what we can help you with in your companies or your personal struggles. And we need you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That would be great. And uh, if you have some questions, by all means, like make comments on our posts and uh, we'll get to those. Thanks. See ya.